Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. And again, once again, we have a very interesting guest for all of you. I have with me this <laughs> afternoon the former governor of Hawaii, Neil Abercrombie, and a longtime congressman and city councilman and uh, just a public service personified, but most important, a dear friend, a good friend, and Neil, Governor Abercrombie. Welcome. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Pleasure well, you, to but have John, you thank us. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aloha. And you said you were having a real interesting guest. So is someone else coming? <laughs> no, Neil, you're it. You're going to be okay. it. And okay, I'll do my so, best. Uh, tell it just just so we can get you know get people oriented. Uh, yeah. What are you doing these days? I mean, what happens well, to? I'm, I'm here in my I'm, I'm here in my my little office at uh, Smith and King Street down in Chinatown. Uh, after I left uh, the governorship, I decided that uh, whatever time was left to me, that I was going to try to devote to the rehabilitation, the, the rejuvenation of, uh, of Chinatown. I love it down here. Um, and uh, uh, so I got connected with, with, as an example, with Mauna Kea Marketplace. I think a lot of people are familiar with that. Right, you may, right. Uh, those who have visited it uh, down uh, you know, Mauna Kea Hotel, Wahi Street down there off River, just up from River Street. Um, there was all, all these wonderful little businesses on the, on the first floor. And uh, they may remember there was a second floor there, a, a big uh, courtyard, and it was used mostly for storage. So I thought it'd be an ideal place to, to put the uh, rental apartments. Uh, You've got to tell the folks. people about that. You need to tell us. So yeah. This is a very important project. So that's what I've been doing. You've been doing. Yeah, uh, we, uh, 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 rental, uh, rental apartments. I'm not talking about speculation and condos and so on. Uh, there's, a, there's a place for that, but uh, not, not in Chinatown and not for the, those who... Uh, especially those who are working, but uh, but don't have the income to be able to afford uh, uh, apartments, and so. So after uh, after you after you uh, left the governorship and you set up your office there, you actually yeah. took over this marketplace in terms well, of turning it yes, into I worked, rental housing. I worked with the owner. Yeah, I, the city owns the property uh, underneath the uh, Monacan Marketplace, and I worked with the owner of uh, of the marketplace of the building. Uh, to get a, 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 a extended lease uh, for for the owner, so that the, the the financing could come into place, so we could build apartments. And I worked with a, a really terrific organization. I mean, a, a lot of times we're able to uh, badmouth government for good reasons, uh, for sure. But I'll tell you, the Department of Community Services, uh, uh, then under Pam Woody Oakland and 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 Becky Soon and and a great team over in community services is in charge of the affordable housing fund of the city and county. And so working with the owner of the property, working with the Bureau of Land Management, the Department of Land Management of the city, working with the Department of Community uh, Services, uh, we built uh, 38 uh, uh, rental apartments for low income people. Uh, they're fully occupied now down in, in uh, over uh, on the second floor at uh, Mauna Kea Marketplace, and I'm looking to do more uh, in Chinatown, uh, more uh, affordable apartments that are permanent rentals. They're not, we're not in the business. I'm not a developer. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be a catalyst for, for seeing that the, the, mo the most pressing problem that I think we have when you see uh, that, uh, that the, the median uh, price for a home on Oahu right now is a, a million dollars. Uh, wow. The most pressing problem is to get rental apartments permanent, which is what I'm working on. And I'm trying to do it in, in Chinatown. I, I have high hopes that uh, that we're going to do dozens and dozens of them. That's what I'm pushing for. Well, Neil, now, now that we're on it, OK. And, and since you know, you're know you a veteran of government, and since you have discovered that uh, these little this niche for yourself in Chinatown. But yeah. what about what? Are, What's your view of the overall sense of oh. how, what, where housing needs to go in the well, state? Let's, uh, John, let's, let's jump right to it. I'll tell you what we could do right now. Uh, there's a huge argument about uh, uh, what to be done with heart, with the, with the, the transit situation. Uh, do we right. stop it? Do we, do we extend it? Do, do we, the station go here, station go there, this, that, and the other thing. 
setting setting the argument whether we should do it or not i think we're way past that argument now the question is is what do we do now uh, right and how does it work and what about ridership and so on here's and and we we've got a couple of real uh, funding dilemmas right now uh and i've tried to involve myself in this too uh, out at the where the stadium is aloha stadium people may not remember but i remember very very well that when the stadium came in in the early 70s way back, back frank Fossey's time uh uh it, that was called halava housing there was housing on right there, john right in, i in, know in, people in, who actually grew up there you know and, and then got displaced got displaced by the stadium right. and the parking lot and uh, for again, for whatever reasons that that it happened, that's where it happened. And the idea was was sound at the time. The university was going to become Division One, and uh, and uh, okay. The and then the, we we had baseball here then, uh, 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 minor league baseball, and and the, the stadium was supposed to move from football to a, a baseball configuration, so on and so forth. Well, what the situation today though in 2021 is. Is we may not know where the the, uh, the the rail is going to go or not go uh, once it's in urban Honolulu. But what we do know is it's supposed to go to where the stadium is, and that we know that where the stadium is now is also just outside Pearl Harbor. It has thousands of people uh, going to work there all the time. Well, there's a hundred plus acres there, John, and right now they're talking about the, the legislature is talking about floating general obligation bonds for four hundred million dollars. To, for the right. stadium and, and trying to get developers to come in and 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 uh, pick up the the tab for for uh, retail development some housing John here's my idea uh, on on affordable housing uh, you know I, I actually thousands. would love beautiful go ahead and we say could put it, thousands you know. of units not hundreds we could put thousands of units out there at uh, where well, law stadium is now uh in in halava Put the put a, a a stop there. You get ridership. The ridership would be there. You get ridership coming in to go to Pearl Harbor to go to work. You get ridership from 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 two or three thousand uh, families, people and families, uh, in, uh, in in Halava Valley. Uh, I call it Halava Valley. It's probably more like Halava Valley. And Neil, Gulch. what that'll do is that'll lower the median price of housing. I think. Of course it I think will. What's the supply increases? It of course it, it will. So it and benefits that land, we have the land. You don't have to pay for the land. We could, you want to put up bonds. You want to, you want to get a, a giant co-op. You want to turn it into a co-op. You could do it. My point is stop talking. If, if look, if Neil Abercrombie and the, and the little department of, of community services of the city and county can build apartments, uh, rental apartments in, in Chinatown, you mean to tell me we can't take a hundred acres where the stadium is now? Tear the stadium down. Put in housing and then build up Ching Field at, at where UH would you Manoa. put the stadium? Well, you do no, need the stadium. we got it right now. Ching Field, we already had the first game there. You could put 25,000 seats in, just like when uh, when I used to go down, and maybe you used to go down to a stadium park down on Eisenberg Ooh, Street and, right. and, and King Street. Come on. It would be we easy. all did, we easy did that when we, all the high school games were played down in the Sure, Wheelie. you just put you double deck you double deck the stadium out uh, at, uh, at the, the existing stadium, which they put up in what 90 days, 60 days, they put the stadium up. There's so you got enough needed. room. You got enough. What you're Plenty saying, Neil, is is that you Plenty got room. enough room on campus to yes, build a twenty-five thousand seat arena, and it would be do. Perfect, and it'd be the best seats the in the world. Universe. Come on, it's the best seats in the world. You're right on top of the game. You're right there. It would. Well, that's fill exciting. Up. That's exciting. Sure. And you know, one of the things that the current stadium did, or when it was built, was that it was built for this huge, uh, fifty thousand seat uh, yeah. arena. But actually, what we're discovering is we need something for university sports of around twenty five thousand, maybe thirty. Sure. And uh, Look, you can do that realistic. right on campus, John. That's realistic for us. Twenty-five thousand is realistic for us for for our games, our Division One games. It, Twenty-five thousand. Look, you you could have boxes there. You could you 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 uh, you know box box seats. Uh, then then the university would get all the revenue. Right now, Aloha Stadium sucks revenue out of the University of Hawaii. Uh, uh, the Division One sports are 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 hobbled by the fact that that it costs so much money to do it, 
and that the, the, the University of Hawaii actually is a loser out at, at uh, Aloha Stadium in terms of revenue and control. Well, tell me, tell me, Governor, why, why do we keep sticking to the idea that a stadium has to be located where the current stadium is? Why, why, why is that? Why hasn't anybody <laughs> just put this <laughs> all together? <laughs> Because there's not enough imagination. Look, you got what you do is you see what the situation is in front of you. And if circumstances change, you got to change with them. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, wait a minute, you know, that, that, that this thing with the $400 million and the, and, the, and the, will we get the developers in? I mean, look what happened before uh, when you try to get the P3 developers in uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, transit oriented development uh, for, for heart. It fell apart because the developers can't make enough money out of that to be able to justify their investment. I'm oh, telling you that there is no way that you are going to be able to, to, to try to, to pass a, to off a $400 million general obligation uh, 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 bond uh, 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 projects from the state and try to get the developers and get anything done over the next five years or a decade. It's not going to happen. Well, what so I'm here talking it about is. is you can start right now. We've already so you got can, you, you have space seats. for affor we, thousands of affordable rental housing oh, and yeah. others, sure. and you got I'll the and you got the ability <laughs> to build a state. You know, we built the uh, when I was in office, we built the arena, and everybody sure. said you couldn't do that, you can't have it, and there it is. So I, you know, I, I have only one idea. argument, John. I had only What's one that? argument with it. I want. I, I wanted it to be 15,000 seats instead of 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you say? You know, which brings me into the, into the you know, you mentioned that uh, one of the, one of the ca causes of all of this may be the lack of imagination. And I, I just got a, I got a uh, question from the, uh, our audience out here and it says, okay. Uh, is that lack of imagination a consequence, or what are the consequences of having a one-party system in Hawaii, where, where everybody's a Democrat, and apparently what you end up with is about five or six different factions? Uh, what, we, we, what? We, okay, but you know, uh, talking about one-party system is lazy thinking. That 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 lets you off the hook. Then you, then you then you have an all-purpose explanation for a question that you never asked correctly in the first place. The, ask the, it, ask it. Yeah, the, the, the question that needs to be asked is, how do you revitalize uh, the, the, the Democratic Party? And of course, you could ask uh, uh, concurrently with that, is it possible to revitalize the Republican Party in Hawaii? I think this, starting from the latter and going backwards, um, I don't think you, you can't revitalize the, the Republican Party because the Republican Party in Hawaii is a, is a, a combination of, of Trumpists and Tea Partyists who are not interested in being Republicans. Uh, uh, my, my association with the Democratic Party and the Republican Party goes back 63 years. Uh, you know, my, my first activity as, as, a, as a Democrat in Hawaii was 1959 with statehood and, uh, and the elections that, that, that followed from that with uh, Jack Burns and, and, uh, and uh, 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 Governor Quinn. And, and uh, on through the, the success then of the Democratic Party. And let me tell you something, uh, uh, whoever asked that question about the one party, there were Republicans in those days that almost beat the Democrats. People think it was just a, a cakewalk for Jack Burns or for George Arioshi, uh, maybe John Y. Hey, you know, uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> it wasn't that's, a cakewalk, it wasn't. That's cake. right, that's right. I remember Randolph Crosley came with like 6,000 votes to win in elections. Uh, some of the elections for uh, for senator even, uh, and some of the congressional well, seats. Well, well, they, why they is it like close. it is today? Why is it that because the Republican, who... as I said, the Republican Party has degenerated into uh, speaking of not any factions has degenerated uh, in, into uh, what Ronald Reagan really uh, wrought, which was to take individualism and turn it into privatism. And this privatism has come into this this selfish, self-centered idea that somehow you, you get to have anything you want, say anything you want, do anything you want, uh, but you don't have any responsibility towards anybody else. And in a, in a democratic society, especially in Hawaii, you have to have a community orientation. 
it has, it has nothing to do with individ, individualism. My God, if you want to talk about individuals, how about Tom Gill? How about Jack Burns? How about Patsy Ming? How about John Ushijima? How about Tony Kunimura? How about Mamoru Yamasaki? Come on, you Kawasaki. We, we've had, uh, how about uh, Vinciano and, and, uh, and Vince Esposito, the two Catholic senators who solved the abortion question in Hawaii 60 years ago? 60 years well, ago. We, we are, uh, I, I, you know, this is fantastic because what you're describing really is the, is the, uh, the political questions of the entire country right now. What, what, what we have happened? now, John, you're right. You're, what we have right now is political entrepreneurs. They're not, there's no, that's not a party. People put a D in front of their name or an R in front of their name. And what it really is, is a bunch of political uh, entrepreneurs all looking for the main chance for themselves that don't believe in anything. Well, the you know, I, 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 I think, take somebody, I know you know her, Liz Cheney. Yeah, you, you you probably served with Liz, or at least no, no. I, I I I mean, I know of her. I, we weren't acquainted, but I guess you, she's, you served she's, with her she's a Republican. She's a Republican. I doubt if I. I mean, she's a hardcore Republican, yeah. as conservative sure. as you can be, and yeah. yet she doesn't fit in her party. I mean, how but does I that served, happen? John, before you were time, even I served with. Uh, you know, God, I'm so old. I need myself coming back. Um, uh, the uh, I served with real hardcore conservative Republican Wadsworth Yee. He owned Pacific Insurance, right? This you're asking right. me how do you revitalize the party? What I think we should do is have multi-member districts again, because we had multi-member districts. We elected Republicans, we elected Democrats, we elected a broad spectrum of ideological and political philosophies across the board. I remember when uh, when I ran for the state senate, number one of the four senators to be elected, four votes you got. You want to talk about democracy? You get four votes for a senator. Was he conservative Republican insurance company owner was number one. I was number two. And then the right. Republicans, then the Republicans pushed for single member districts. Single member well, districts. And I told him, I said, you're going to kill yourself. I told him, was he, I remember talking to my, and he was my friend. We work together uh, and of necessity. We were legislators, right? So we work together. Um, I told Wads, if you go to a single member district, I told Wads, if you go to a single member district, I'm going to have to run against you and I'm going to beat you. I said, <laughs> we gonna, with, that, with that note, we're going to come right back from a short <laughs> break. Aloha, I'm Dan Leaf. I go by Fig because I was an Air Force fighter pilot for 33 years and you have to have a nickname. I get to host on Think Tech Hawaii two shows, Figments, The Power of Imagination, and Figments on Reality. The Power of Imagination introduces you to some of my incredible friends and their life experiences, astronauts, war heroes, Hollywood writers, you name it, they're on it and you'll be inspired and entertained. And on reality, I'll give you something hard to find, non-political commentary on today's events. That's right, non-political because the vitriol doesn't help folks. So figments, the power of imagination, figments on reality, both on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii, talk story with John Waihe'e and our special guest this afternoon, former congressman, governor, and all around servant of the people. I, I don't know how to yeah. express this, but he has never stopped 
ever since I've known him, never stopped working for the public good. So Neil Abercrombie. Thank you, sir. Neil, look, you, you're talking about, uh, you know, on the edges of a very sensitive issue. We talked about people like Liz Cheney and so forth. Yes. But whether we like it or not, the last so many years, the culture in America is just sort of, you know, falling apart. I mean, or dividing yes. so gra graphically. And recently, the Supreme Court upheld a very draconian uh, law uh, regarding the woman's right to choose in Texas. Yeah. And yeah. where, where does all of this take us? I mean, what's happening to America, and how will it affect Hawaii? Since you have the experience of being somebody who not only served in the state capital, but in our, uh, in America's capital in Washington, yes. D.C. Well, that, 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 that leads me to actually uh, answer a question that's implied from what you just said about about the, the parties uh, uh, disappearing, if you will, as, as parties, uh, a, a value uh, system. Uh, associated with uh, po political activity. Um, people ask me, well, you know, do you miss Washington? And I said, I miss some of the individuals there uh, and I miss being able to work with them. But by the time I left to run for governor, part of the reason that I left uh, 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 Congress was it was getting impossible to do the legislative work. I mean, you're sent there as a legislator. You're not sent there as a pontificator. You're not sent there as a preacher. You're not a graduate of the theological school there. Uh, you have to understand that there are 434 other people besides yourself, all of whom got an agenda, all of whom ha have an agenda, all of whom uh, have a particular political, social, and economic dynamics in their districts that, that requires a special attention and, requ and require your empathy and your understanding and your willingness to, to concede that they may have, have a, a problem similar to yours, but solutions that are, are entirely different from what would apply, say, in an island state like ours, as opposed to a landlocked state like Iowa. My whole point being is that might seem obvious to everybody, but what happened is, is about the time uh, the, uh, in the early 90s when Newt Gingrich came in and started uh, denouncing the House of Representatives, the People's House, to which you, you cannot be appointed, to which you must be elected, um, uh, for ideological uh, reasons of trying to gain power, sheer power in the exercise of power. And that, that's the kind of people that are there now. Uh, and, and, the, and the Democratic Party is not free of it either. Uh, people uh, who are in, infused with a sense, sense of self-righteousness and, and uh, a sense of, of, uh, of, of uh, determinist uh, uh, of certainty that they know exactly the way that things should be done, they don't take into account that that you have to get 218 of those 435 people in the House and, and sometimes 60 votes of the 100 in the Senate in order to accomplish anything. You're there to legislate on behalf of the common good. And that well, doesn't some exist of the, now, John. Some of, the, some, of the people, some of the people there think that, you know, the idea of not legislating is why they're there. That well, they're there to stop. Right. We, you know, I they, began they, to they, see people, right, I began to see people uh, uh, coming into the Congress, who were 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 not whose avowed purpose was not to legislate, which which was to destroy uh, the, the, at that point the House of Representatives, and they succeeded. They ne very nearly succeeded. Uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, bless her, I think she's the most uh, uh, astute politician in maybe certainly in the twenty first century. That's for sure. Has been able to 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 shore it up and, and keep it going, but. It, it, I, I keep thinking back, John, as I do every day. I have in my, in my home, in my, in my study, uh, and, and my, my chair, my favorite chair that I sit in, directly opposite me is a picture of uh, Patsy Mink and I. Uh, at, that at, was a great team. Left. You, got, you guys were one of the best teams that Hawaii Let has ever Let me tell had. you, there never, ever was anybody like Patsy Mink. There never, ever will be. By the be way, Neil, again. we can't see, we can't see. Oh, I'm sorry. Goal, so. <laughs> I, 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 I apologize to, to our, our guests out there. I mean, people looking in, I get so excited. I keep shifting the, the, my, the, the picture, but I will tell you something. Patsy Mink ranks uh, among the top legislators in the history of the United States. 
and uh, and uh, and that kind of person, Patsy Mink, an intellectual, uh, uh, passionate, uh, committed, but she understood legislation. She understood legislation and, and what it took to get 217 other people to vote. You know what the secret of legislating is, John? It, it, no. it, it, people don't vote for you for the, for your reasons. They vote for you for their reasons. You have to understand what it takes to get them to reason that voting with you is something that it's okay for them to do. You can't, you can't overcome them. You can't argue them into it. You can't bludgeon them into it. They vote for you for their reasons, not yours. And if you can remember that, and if you have a humble attitude, towards what you bring to it, then you can legislate. The problem we have- Well, I tell you, I, we, I hope, I hope that we have young aspiring, or not young necessarily, but aspiring mm -hmm. uh, politicians today who, who are listening and can take that advice. That is really good well, advice. We, we sure I, need to have them in 2022 or we're in very deep trouble. But if, uh, if I can just uh, uh, pivot back, John, because I know we don't have a lot of time, maybe there's other questions. Uh, coming in, I just want to indicate that uh, in 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 Hawaii too, um, what what what's necessary for us is to understand that we have to subsume our own interests, so-called factions that said got brought up from from one party. It's not that there's one party. I'll tell you what happened from where we started. The Republican Party, a whole bunch of uh, I mean Republican thinking people, just put a D in front of their names and ran for the legislature. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's that's my view. Yeah, and I, I I tend to agree with you. You know what's interesting, though. I don't want to leave this issue. Then I want to come back and circle back to a positive uh, thing, yeah. uh, which is the, what we were talking about earlier regarding yeah, stadium the and housing. Yeah, absolutely. And we can do that. John, but before we get there, that's something we, we can do. People say, "Well, what are we going to do?" You know, the environment, the ocean is coming in, and so on, and all of that's true. But I'll tell you something. Turning the stadium area into affordable housing and, and, and taking this, the stadium idea and putting it up on the Manoa campus is something that can be done right now. That's and, and what we should be concentrating on. Governor, I, I, you know, I know just today, you and I and uh, Governor, Governor Caetano actually discussed that. And we Governor all Caetano three of is a us big are, champion. Governor Caetano is a big champion of uh, of uh, of the stadium at uh, at, uh, at 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 Manoa. Well, that makes a lot of sense, you know. And, and the idea of building housing, and actually, that's what the, where the stadium is now. Aloha Stadium yeah. is now is in the center of really kind of a residential area. The city with, is with, going with, all with, the way with, out there with, with heart. With heart, regardless of what you think about where it's going or well, all the rest of it, at least it's already built there, and you you got to stop right there. And you and you could get shuttles into Pearl Harbor, uh, uh, and if you build a, a community there, I mean, you 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 got you could do shopping centers, you can do you can do schools, you can do everything right on the spot, and because you got transportation back and forth. Well, I tell you one thing, Governor. I want to join you and Governor Caetano in expressing our support for that i think that's fantastic and for folks you heard it here first on think tech hawaii what the one solution to the problems <laughs> we face here is to take aloha stadium forget about making some kind of megatropolis uh whatever yeah. out there and instead build affordable housing mainly rentals make it possible for thousands of people to actually live here in Hawaii, and then go build us a 25,000 seat uh, stadium right on campus. At the All University we have to do is Hawaii. extend it. You wanna know something, John? I know we're getting close to the end. Part of the reason I would like to see the housing out at Halaba Housing, which is which is what the stadium was and, and still is, is it it's heartbreaking to think that uh, so many people of hawaii have to go to the mainland to make a living they have to go to to the mainland in order to afford not have 40 and 50 percent of the of their disposable uh, disposable income that's a joke to say that yeah. 40 uh, 40 or 50 percent of whatever income they're able to 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 retain or sustain for themselves just to pay rent come on they yeah we're just talking about that today right. just talking about that today where we, we saw 
I think it was Ben uh, had a friend that uh, not, went to the mainland and went there so they could afford to send their kids to college. I yeah. mean, where does this all end? You know. Well, I'll it tell you one of the ways it make sense. End nationally, finish up nationally is back Joe Biden's plan. I certainly hope that every single member of the of the Hawaii congressional oh, delegation yes. is going to get behind Joe Biden one hundred and ten percent because yeah, I wanna, we need I, the preschool. You know what I we wanna, you struggle I for? Echo. I struggle I for it. Ben Cayetano, Ben Cayetano got the A plus program and so on. We need to have preschool. We need to have a family lead. We need to have kids be able to go to their first two years in the community college. We need to back up Joe Biden. We need to back up a stadium in Manoa at the at university, and we need to get housing in, in into a lava uh, uh, gulch where the where the Aloha Stadium is now, and you can count on. <laughs> <laughs> let me say, sweet. let me say, ditto, 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 and by the way, I, you know, it would be a shame if not every member of our delegation voted to support that plan. Governor, I really want to thank you uh, for being with us. Uh, you were a great congressman. I know that when I was in office, thank you, John. I counted on you 100%. And also, I believe you were a really good governor. So, uh, welcome and thank you for being with us. And I'm sure let's do it again, John. Anytime. We, next let's time we'll do hey, this. Let's get, hey, let's let's get, get ben. ben on. Let's we'll get, ben, get ben, ben on next on. time. <laughs> <laughs> we need an hour show. All right. Aloha, yeah. everybody, and welcome back in two weeks. Thank you. Aloha.